Hello everyone and welcome to another development session. Um, I'm Sajjad and today I am hoping to work a little bit more on our compiler. Um, I'm hoping that we can get uh, imports done in today's session. And uh, yeah. So how's everyone doing? Is everything all right? Um, in, uh, I have some news to share with you guys too. Uh, I somehow fixed the, the and then problem that we had uh, in previous stream. Apparently the problem was that I wasn't saving one of the files and so it was not compiled correctly. It wasn't compiled in the latest version. And that is fixed now and I even implemented the or uh, for Boolean values. And uh, yeah, so, so this, this whole file works correctly now. And uh, let me show you actually. So um, you can see we have, uh, we start with the Boolean, we try the negation of it. Uh, we start with a number, we try, uh, you know, different operations along with uh, comparisons and they work, you know, different comparisons, they all work. and using numbers directly also works. Uh, while statement is correct, and 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 is correct, or is correct. And even uh, the good thing is, uh, so for example, in and then if the first one is not, the second one is not going to be called, you know? Uh, same thing for, for or. If the first one is true, the second one is not going to be called. And the whole thing is working kind of kind of great. So yeah, so that's where we are now. Right. And uh, if I try to compile the code, let me see, uh, so bean room and then test file. And if I link it together with the C file and run it, you can see that all of the different parts of the code is working correctly as expected. And that's that's really good. And my goal for today is to get imports done. Um, so that's one of the things that we we desperately need at this point uh, because I'm not sure if you noticed or not, but all of my test files start with a bunch of you know function definitions that you know, could be shared among programs. And uh, if we if we get imports implemented correctly, we don't really need to worry about that anymore, right? So yeah. So, so I'm gonna create a new test file. Um, let's call it test import. And in test import, I am going to define all of this. You know, just the signatures, nothing more. And then uh, we are going to have a test six that imports test imports and then you should be able to just use them so i'm gonna assume that the printf for example is defined so i'm gonna say printf hello world new line and then return zero so so this file ideally should work i know it won't work at this point but you know it should work so <laughs> So let's see, uh, probably we are going to get uh, a parsing error. Yeah, couldn't parse file at index 1. And we have to deal with that properly. Hang on a second, yeah. Uh, actually, let's do it like that. Okay. So yeah, so let's just start by implementing the parse rule for imported statements. And I think it's safe to say that uh, a part, uh, it should have its own parser and it should be registered as a top rule because we are not going to import inside another function. I just, I, I desperately hate that. I don't want to let that happen to you in this language. So I'm going to create an import parser uh, like header. And let's look at uh, something else. Let's look at return for inspiration. Right, so we have uh, a pragma once, and we have include 
a keyword parser and I think we want an ID parser, maybe potentially a string parser as well. But for now, uh, an ID parser would be fine. So our import parser behaves like this. It's a public parse rule that has a virtual parse result scheme like so. Even we can say over right here. Well, I think that's not necessary, but we can. Right? So, so this is the base of what we have. And privately, we have a keyword parser called IMP, import parser. And we have a ID parser, IP. And um, to be able to parse the import statement, we have to define it as a keyword. So I'm going to do that real quick too. Keywords.h. We have keyword import, like so. And we are going to say, um, what do we want to say? We want to say, um, keyword parser, in case you saw import, return import, and uh, when you saw import, return a new keyword token with import inside of it. Okay, that's the basic of what we, what we want to do. And yeah. Okay, I'm going to make sure everything is working. Looks like it. Right, so uh, we have the keyword parser and now we can just, oh, uh, this window please. We can say import parser parser.c++. You want to include import parser um, like so. And we want to have the constructor to initialize the keyword parser, right? So I'm going to say my import parser, when, when initialized, sets its import parser to keyword import. So it expects to see this keyword when dealing with that. And we can even include keyword.header. Um, right. We have to declare a constructor here as well. I forgot about that. Like so, and that should be everything. So that's the constructor. Now, how does uh, the scheme look like? Well, we know the scheme is something like so, and we want to capture the keyword and then uh, the ID. So I'm going to say parse this one and then feed it into the IP parser. Uh, like that. Okay. And this is a very basic uh, keyword parser. We aren't dealing with dots, we aren't dealing with path or anything. We just give it another, uh, you know, just like this. We just say import whatever. There's no semicolon at the end, there's no dots in the middle, nothing. Just, just like that. And this should work. So the parser should work at this stage if you register it. And let's do that. Um, Parser that's C plus plus. I want to include the import parser and then register it as a top rule. So this that register top rule new import parser. You know that's a very basic approach to handling this. And if we compile it, we should see the parser doing its job, but the compiler actually failing to do anything for us. Right, so that's done, yes. 
now we can try to run this and you can see it successfully parsed that so it says i saw an import statement followed by an id which had test import inside of it this is this line and then i saw your main function but it doesn't find the printf function here because it's not able to actually process this one so to do that we are going to define um, an import token which is a public token like so and we know that it has a std string import path right uh let's do it camel case like oh come on remove replace with p right now we also need to have our constructor for this one uh public like that so import token uh we require to get the import path so we do that we also need the compile context the source code and the position from experience we know that we require to provide a description method and it is overriding a virtual method in the token parent right so that's all we need to do at this point and uh let's write the code for that so import token the constructor the constructor you know what i am going to yank everything inside the parentheses oh yank inside parentheses okay and then paste right so set import path from import path and then this.cc would be cc oh come on you need to come here right and set the source for code and the position okay um all oh, right a starting position and end position we have two of those so this is end position this is end position this is a starting position and this is end position right and here we also have to say capture starting position and capture end position okay uh you know what i'm going to disable golden ratio so we don't jump like that okay that's better so uh we we have our constructor and how do we describe this To describe it for debug purposes, we are going to say importing whatever uh, import path is, and like so. It doesn't really matter what we put there, right? It's just a debug message. So I'm going to capture the results here. Uh, let's call it ants. We capture that. If there was any error, return it. Otherwise, return a parse result. So we need the ID. I'm gonna put it there. The CC, the SR there. For the starting position, we can use this one. And for the end position, we can use this one. Okay. Um, this should be new import token. And this should be surrounded by a parse result okay now we have to figure out what the id is and i'm going to say that id comes from so steady string i'm going to define it as a pointer and we'll deal with that in a second so um we want to capture id from ants and we know that it's a tuple token because we have used our our uh, piping operator. So we do that and say ants.token and then capture the second one. So this, this is a string token uh, or an ID token rather. And we know that ID tokens have ID inside of them. So we can capture all of this by referencing the address and then passing it here like so. And that should save us some small runtime. 
Okay, so if I compile it at this stage, the the parser should pretty print it like this instead of the previous version where it was printing a tuple, right? So this is a tuple, and if I run it now, it's going to be pretty printed like that. We went from that one to this one, which is exactly what I wanted to do, right? Right. So the next step would be to actually refine uh, this, uh, the AST that's going to handle this, right? So we know, again, that we have to define our two AST function, like so. And, uh, right, so how does it look like? We have import token to AST like that, and we are going to return new uh, import with our import path passed inside of it. Right, and we are assuming that import exists. So AST import the header should exist, and we are going to go and define that basically. Okay, so that's everything I want to do at this point uh, in the parser part. So let's go to the AST and define import dot header. And you know I'm going to uh, so this is an a statement, so we're going to include statement dot header. So and class import is a public statement. We know we have a string import path and a constructor at the very least. So cd string import path. And this is C++, please. Right. So that works and that works. And uh, what's your problem? Okay, so, right, that is going to be solved in a second when we actually develop our AST. So let's look at some uh, functions. For example, we can look at uh, a struct, I guess. Is that a viable thing to look at? Mm, no, let's look at uh, if statements. That's better. Right. So we have to override these three functions for this to be in a statement. Otherwise, it's going to be an abstract method. Prepare, compile, and code gen. And we know how each of those work. So it is going to be a relatively easy implementation compared to what we have previously. So we are going to import uh, the import class and the constructor is going to do this um it's going to say import path is handled like that right right now in the prepare function we want to actually invoke the source code so we want to say um void import the pair so uh let's actually write the other two as well and then i'm going to look at some other code to help us write this one okay so the way we handle new source code if you look at the base uh, room.cpp file, we start by creating a source thingy. Um, we do that in compile context, but we get it here. And uh, we 
we start by loading them and then repeatedly capturing all of their elements. And this should be done in the prepare function, I believe. Right? Okay. So you want to say that source s, uh, let's actually add that in our import.header. So you have a source s and include source like so. So you don't complain. Right. So when you want to prepare, uh, well, how do we prepare source? We have to give it a name. Okay, so uh, we can do that here. I guess uh, I guess we can make it uh, a pointer so that we can run it in the prepare function and not everywhere else, right? So here I am going to say this is a new source with import path. So we have it there. Now, uh, we want to be able to um, load it. So we're going to say uh, cc.sources. Let's include base. So cc dot sources dot push at back s we want to have it inside the sources block of the compile context and uh, I believe that's everything right no that's not everything so so okay let's let's ignore that for for now we are going to uh, load it like so. And then we are going to um, repeatedly parse everything inside of it. So while true, and t would be cc the parser dot parse top like so, and this would be that, and this should be auto. Okay. So while we have a parse result, capture the ending position. Ending position with the t dot token. Ending position like so, and this is going to be initialized with zero. I guess it should be initialized with zero here as well. Okay. And uh, so you want to get an AST like so. Oh, to AST. Like so, and then uh, if there was an AST, push it back. Right. So maybe a better option would be to to extract this and put it inside the source block, and we expect the source to return an AST function for us. I think that would be that would help a little bit here because we're repeating the code. So let's say let's say after we load it, uh, we get an AST uh, STD vector of the abstract syntax tree objects called ASTs, and we get that from source dot parse with CC, right? So we get the, we capture that essentially, and uh, yeah. So then we have to call prepare compile, and so we're going to so we're going to say for each of the items in AST, call prepare on them. Also, uh, I'll compile on them. Also, call code gen on them. If they are a statement, that is. 
So if statement star s right. Uh, state meant like so. Right, so AST, I guess, should be defined in the class as well. Um, we're going to do that there. So let's go to the import.h and define an std vector ast star asts. And yeah. Right, so all we have to do is add the parse method in the source code. So we are going to go here and say, okay. You have a public method that is going to return a vector of ASD stars called parse. And you get a compiled context to do so. Um, is that okay? Should be. Right. So where do we implement it? We implement it in, um, I'm guessing, base. So std vector asd star source parse right and this is the code that we wanna basically implement. So we wanna let's return a pointer here. And here as well, this should be a pointer. Should it be? No, this shouldn't be a pointer, but uh, but the source dot header should be a pointer. Should return a pointer. Okay. Uh, right. I think this is correct. Right. So what you want to do, we want to create the vector first. Uh, you know what? Auto ends is a new std vector containing ASD star, like so. So we create the answer and we return it in the end. And in the meanwhile, what we're going to do, we are going to ask CC to load us this line. We are going to, oh, uh, like that. We are going to prepare a parse result called T and capture the first element, like so, and capture the element. So instead of S, you should say this. I believe. Right. And while the token is there, you want to repeatedly capture the next token. And meanwhile, um, ask the token to convert it to, uh, itself to an ASD with the CC that we have. And if it was successful, we are going to push underline back A. And uh, potentially we can debug it with a verbosity of none for now. Okay, that's okay. Right, so we do that and then we capture the next token. Just like that. Capture the next token and this should be ends, I think. And instead of S, we return this. So we do that repeatedly, right? And then we skip any white space and we potentially return an error if there is one to be returned. So uh, this could be this.str and this should be this.str and this should be like that. And that's everything here, right? So we need to remove all of those and instead say asts dot 
Um, can I insert many at the same time with the vector? CPP vector insert many. Uh, okay, so I'm guessing we should do something like that. So we are going to say is this that insert at the Current end and uh, so auto as uh, AST source AST we get that from this one that parse like so okay so from your Beginning to your end, and then uh, I think it's safe to delete it, but I might be wrong. So this is essentially the same thing as before, only you know we moved it around a little bit. Now uh, let's look at the import.h uh, or import.cpp. Right, so this is going to be problematic, and we are going to do that. Now, uh, do that. Yes. Right. Okay, so compile this one for me, and let's let's run this on one of the older tests. If it works, uh, import uh, this should be public. If it works, we are going to try to see if the import statement is actually working or not. But we don't have to start with the you know, involving import at first because we changed some of the underlying parts of our language, right? And I think it should work. It's basically the same code, only moved into another function. The only thing that, that worries me is the data statement that we had, but that really shouldn't be a problem. Uh, top, top. Okay, you have to regenerate CMake first and then compile. Okay. Let's see what happens then. No compilation error. Uh, run it on the previous code. Okay, so it works on, on previous code without imports. Now, does it work on the new system? Does not. So, what could be the problem here? Um, let's see, let's, let's backtrace. So, was it able to load the file? Properly, do you think? Uh, we can double check by by printing here. So print and say uh, that's that should be CC. Uh, ran here, loaded um, ASTs that size items. So let's see how many items it is parsing, or if it is parsing anything at all. Right? There is a slight possibility that this function is not being invoked. Right. Ran here, loaded zero items. Uh, that could be because we have an... Okay, so if you see here, we are passing import path directly, and it, it's not finding the file, right? 
because the import path here, I am guessing, is coming from here, and that file doesn't exist. The file that exists is test import dot run. So what we should do, we should uh, we should create a function somewhere. Maybe in the compile context, I don't know. Let's 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 go there. Uh, in the base dot header. So we should have a function here called path result. So we expect to get a path string and get out another one. So here, then we can say cc path result whatever this is. And in the path result, we are just going to append that room at the moment, and we can solve that later, right? It doesn't have to be complicated at this point. We can increase the complexity as you go along. So the cc dot path result. So if uh, we can even check. So uh, find that room. That that I think that returns a uh, an end in case there was a problem. No. What do you return? Find the position of C string. Uh, it is returning a index. If not found, return and post. Okay, so if this was not in post, std in post, std string in post. Right. So if it was not in post, I uh, return it as is. Okay. Otherwise, I am going to say okay. Uh, path should have a dot from at the end and return that instead. So maybe if it was imposed, we should do that. That's better. Yeah, that's cleaner. Right. So let's recompile and see what happens here after the compilation finishes, of course. Right. Okay. It's taking a lot of time to compile everything. I, I, I really dislike that. Okay. So now if I come here and run that. Oh, look at that. And if I do this one, undefined reference to printf.5, who called printf.5? Oh, so there is a redefinition going on here. So previously, we were worried that this is this is not being called, but it looks like it is being called twice. So we loaded ten items. Uh, let's look at let's look here actually. So import dot run. So everything is there only once. 
we don't have any repeated entries. And in test six, yep. I'm guessing. Let's look at the import.cpp. So we are ran only once, but something is calling our functions multiple times. The code gen is being called multiple times. Let's let's double check. So uh, ran compile and code gen. So so let's see which one is being called multiple times and then we can go and fix that one okay uh come on okay right so uh we tap, 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 tap. so that is called 10 times no, no so that's called once with 10 items compile is called once with 10 items as well Ocean has 10 items too. So I'm guessing this is fine. So what's the problem? It says we have 10 items. Do we have 10 items? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 5 items. Why do you have 10 items? So are you loading everything twice? Is that what's happening here? How could that be? Um, so we call it once. Capture the results. I... I'm not sure what's happening. Let's look at the parse.cc. Uh, no, not that one. It should be source.parse, right. So we capture each element. We convert it to an AST and we add it once. Do we have the same problem in the other code? So if I do test five instead, do I get multiple definition of everything too? That seems to be okay. But this is not. And we know the problem inside there. Uh, let's see. See, it, it looks it, it loops back. So print int is from zero to twenty eight, and then we have another print int here from one hundred sixty to one hundred eighty eight. That, that really shouldn't be the case. We messed up something here. So let's see. Uh, you know what? What if I add a new line here? If that solves it, I know what the problem is. That didn't solve it. Okay. Uh... Oh, I just I just realized the emote from the chat was on. I'm sorry about that. 
I didn't mean to do that. I, I'm not familiar with how the thing works. Is this okay now? Should be. Can I send a message here? Yeah. I just realized it was on. I'm really sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, so what's happening here? Could it be that these are returning the wrong end position? That'd be the case. Only have the same problem if I define a test function here. Yes. Okay, so let's come here then. We load the file. Okay. We start by taking the first top rule. We start with the end position. We keep going in this cycle. We keep going in this cycle. So we add the extract and the new end position from the token, apply it here. Then we push it back. We are pushing it back only once. And then we are parsing from the next. From the previous end position plus one. The weird thing is, it works for normal files, but it's not working in an import statement. So, so does it work if I do something like this? So we know that test five is okay, right? We've, we've seen that, we've tested that. So if I say test five, it should potentially work. And it does. No, it doesn't. It does not. And if I reference to so it's it's something it has something to do with our importer statement for sure. Hmm. So we load the source code. We parse it. And then uh, we, we call prepare on them. And we are called only one. So so let's let's see the size before we call prepare on them. Let's see if it changes. Early prepare. If that changes, then we know this is problematic. Okay. Don't parse file at index, whatever. Okay, uh, maybe so. We load the file. I'm just I'm just double checking everything. I'm guessing it's it has something to do with epos 
and it not being initialized correctly because this is being printed out. Right? So it is repeatedly calling that and, that, and then at some point it says, I don't know what's after that index. So it potentially has something to do with that. Um, Okay, another idea is let's let's print let's print epos directly you have to figure this out right and if it, that didn't work i am going to turn to gdb to properly debug this statement Okay, so that that finished. Run this. So epos is 028, 64, 119, 159, 189, 225, 252, 280. Could you tell me what is the size of the file while while you're doing this? So, uh, it is in str dot size, I believe. Let's see what the file size is. Okay. If it was zero, file size is three twenty percent. Okay. It's been called twice. It, it is load. It is. Hmm. It is loading twice the size of what it is supposed to load. Right? Um, hang on. What does source look like? So str is a string. SSTR is that, okay? How does load behave? load you load the buffer and you fetch so go to the definition of that that is okay and what about fetch that is also okay so at least i think so maybe we can print the source code so after you load it CC debug imported code is uh, add a new line there and then you can say str and then another new line. Okay, let's see if that works. So, uh, imported code is, yep, it is, it is twice the code. Now why is that? So the code is certainly being repeated somewhere, somehow. Um... And right before that, it is the load is called, which, as we saw, is calling load buffer and then fetch. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. So, so, so this is being printed once, and then we are printing it 
again somewhere else and then once more so who is printing this one who is printing that i'm guessing that has to do with the load so this is being printed by the load probably Oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. So in the import CPP, yes, we are calling the load here ourselves, and that is causing all of the problems because parse is calling load again. Okay, that took more than I expected it, but you know. Uh, okay, so let's compile that again and remove the debug statements here because they are useless at this point. Come on, uh, delete that, that, and that one. Compile everything. So the code shouldn't be repeated anymore. We should get, we should see everything only once. I believe. Okay. Run. Compile. Output. So the important statement works, and we can we can start using it in our projects. Oh, um, what did I just do? Git slash list. Git slash apply. Okay, and then list again. Is everything okay now? Did I mess something up? I think I messed something up. Should be fine. Should be fine. Yeah, it's going to recompile everything now. Okay. That is okay. We don't really care about that. Right, so. Did that finish? Yes. Can I still compile? Looks like it. Stat. Okay. Add everything, compile, and say added imports. So there we go. That's import statements. And uh, yeah. Right. Okay. What else should we do? Um, so we added the import statements. We had uh, logical operations, and now I guess we can start working on defining. Um, Compile context because I don't see anything else to work on at the moment. And compile context are a little bit tricky, but I guess we have to do it right at some point. There, there is no point in putting that off, right? But there's something else I, I really want to work on. And so if you if you look at the code here, uh, this is room that CPP and. Uh, this is roomy.cpp. And you can see roomy.cpp is empty completely. And room.cpp has all of the code inside of it. And that's not really fair because, you know, we have to do something here. And the code here could potentially be broken into multiple things. And we aren't really doing that. So, so we, have to, we have to potentially think about 
migrating some of this stuff to this stuff to a new file that you know we can just call from Rumi and Room at the same time. At least the the parse, compile, and code gem parts. At least. I'm even you know, I kind of want to call the the model things as well, but we can we can ignore that for now. So uh, right, the other thing that I really want to uh, manage is the compiler flags. So we have some flags at the moment. If I go to here. We are supporting dash v and dash o. Dash v supports verbosity and dash o supports you know, the output file basically. And uh, the the rest are the, in, the input the inputs the compiler. But we aren't really respecting dash v when uh, dealing with LLVM. If you see, uh, if I run this without any verbose flag, I'm still printing out a lot of stuff. And that that shouldn't be the case. So so let's clean let's clean this up first, and then we can come back and do the rest. Okay, so the way it works, I think I'm kind of tempted to move some of this stuff out as well because base that CPP is too large at this moment. We can move it into compile context, source, you know, things like that. Let's do that. That's 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 a cleanup that we have to do at some point. So let's do it. let's do it now. I am going to include a base header. So anything that has compile context in it should go to the other file. All right. So this one. Come here. This one should come here. Uh, compile context load. Oh, come on. Of course. Compile context push context, push context, pop context, register name, lookup, and Okay. You also need to take out path result. And while we're at it, let's change this to compact context instead of CC. They are the same thing. But you know, if you have it like this, we can look it up faster and better. So that's CC, that C and it is going to Give me some errors first of all because null stream is not defined. So let's define null stream for that. Um, sure. This part. Okay. We don't need to move out the header files, but this should be done. So we are dealing with source. Let's copy it here as well and any other errors no okay so that's cpp and let's add it to cmake so when you're dealing with base be sure to compile cc.cpp and i guess source.cpp you're going to work on source next All right so source.cpp you have to have that at least and okay so the operator fetch load buffer parse state uh, I guess that one as well yeah, basically everything should come here basically we only has printing for that and you don't need to have vector or stream buffer, IO stream, FS stream. Well, we need IO stream. Don't need that one. Right. So if I compile this one, and if I actually, you know what? Let's let's clean up uh, the build and binary folder. 
and compile it again. Right. Now, compile everything. So it should still work. And uh, that's a very basic cleanup that we had to do. And we can, we, can, we can expand on it if we need to, but I think this is good enough for now. Next up, we are going to deal with the verbose flag. You know, we are not respecting verbose flag now. Okay. Almost done. Hmm. Hmm. Right, so what file is this? Probably we're missing an import. An import. Uh, da, 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 da. Start from the top. In member function, that. Okay, so we have to in include fs stream. I think it's called fs stream. Right? And we want to also have iOS stream for the symbols here. Let's see if we get any other error. Uh, in CC, okay, you need to. Oh, that was for the other file. Sorry about that. Sorry. Right, like that. What else? The so CC is done. Now, source is. Complaining about FS stream, so we are going to add it there as well. What else? It doesn't know CC. Okay, you can look at it here uh, in base.header, I believe. Okay, so that's done. Um, I mean, that's not really anything. Hard to follow, we just moved some functions around. We're organized. <laughs> okay. Next, I wanna come here. Right. Now we have a different verbosity approaches. So if you have a low verbosity, that is only one dash v, you get the source printed out. And I think that's not fair. This should be at least a medium. Come on. Change word to medium. Medium. Okay. And that is okay. So where else are we printing things? So here, LLVM printing. So if, um, so what, how do you want to handle this? So if CC, that verbosity is less than, or I guess is higher than, or equal to verbosity that low printed in the module for us. So if, in theory, if I do it like this, uh, without any dash v flag, it shouldn't print anything for me, right? Because, come on, what's taking so long? It is a serial printing some stuff. And um, so this is a problem. And the, so I know, I know where, where this is happening. Registering is done in CC. Right, so you shouldn't be none, you should be high actually, right? Because you're registering some stuff. And uh, the other thing in the parse file, I think here, so we have debug statements, yeah. This shouldn't be none, it should be at least medium. Compile. 
Okay, so if I run that again, come on. I only get couldn't parse file at index whatever, and that's actually not correct either. You shouldn't pin this one. So let's see. So epos, and then what is the next one? Uh, it is str dot size. So let's com compare those numbers. I'm guessing the inequality should be less than, strictly less than, but we'll see. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have anything extra in the test file? What if I do that? Right. So shouldn't this be equals plus one? Just asking. Because equals, I think, is pointing to the semicolon at the moment, and it's not going to be handled properly. I'm just guessing. Let's see. Right. Put them parse file at index minus one. So here, um, let's not change epos. Let's change this one and say if it wasn't equal to minus one, then give an error. And this is right. This should be a strict error. And I'm going to even add that in the end. So it forcefully finishes if there was a parsing error somewhere. OK? Let's run it again. Okay, so it finished without any messages. If I run it with dash v, I get some stuff. What's that empty thing over there? Who's printing nothing there? Dash v v. Oh, sorry. Dash v dash v. You get some additional information and dash v dash v dash v. You get more additional information. Okay, I'm happy with that. I am happy with that. I'm not really happy with the empty strings there, but you know, what can you do? Uh, I'm guessing... I mean, it's not like there isn't a solution to that, but it's not worth it. So let's just add this and say, uh, verbosity cleanup. So there's that. And I'm dragging it. I should be working on compile context. I know, but that was necessary. So now let's work on the, the good stuff. The selling point of Rumi, if you will. So uh, import test import. I'm not going to do that anymore. Now. You want to have a main function like before units, and you're just going to print that hello world, and then return. Uh, let's have it as integer instead. Right. So you want to have that, and aside from that, you want to say. Compile test. So we want to have a test function. That's doing that. So yeah. So the compile directive 
basically forces the next function to be run in compile time. And we want to implement that. It shouldn't be really hard to do so, but that is going to empower us and allow us to do a lot of different things. So, and if I run this code now, it says I can't parse it at this index, which is you know a, a, an acceptable message because we a, we asked it to do something it doesn't know how to do, right? So let's start by writing a parser. And it is going to be called um, directive parser dot header. So a directive parser is a is a top rule that handles that and the rest. We don't really care about the rest at this point. We just want to see the at sign followed by an ID. That's all we want to do. So yeah, so this is a again a parse rule, and we are going to include a, a parser for it. And class directive parser has a public parser inside of it, and this is a C plus plus file. Right. So um, we have a parse result scheme function. Function, come on, please be complete. No, virtual. Okay, it's not going to do that. So we have CC, we have the source, and we have the position. Uh, it's not virtual, and we're not overwriting anything. So let's. Okay, and then we have a constructor. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but let's have it for now. And then uh, we want to have an ID parser and a symbol parser. I'm going to say add parser, right? Because that's the add sign symbol. Right. Let's include uh, ID parser that header and include the symbol parser. Okay. There's that. You know what, folks? I'm going to take a very short break and I will be back in just a minute. Okay, and we're back. Right, so uh, we defined the, the parser. Now we have to define the source code for it, the implementation of it, right? And again, uh, it's going to be very similar to what we had earlier on the, we expect to see in the at sign, the ID, and then a top rule, right? So let's, let's do that. Uh, directive parser.c++. We want to include directive parser. And let's just start by with the constructor. So we have it like so. We want to initialize the at sign parser with symbol hat. I'm not sure if we have that symbol defined. We might have to define it in bold. 
Yes. So we don't have that defined. Let's go and define that. So at and then in the symbol parser case at this would be as at sign and then break. And down here okay. So that's easy. That was easy. And we have our constructor. Now we have to define the, the scheme for directive parser. And we know that it's going to look something like this. So directive parser scheme. We have autocomplete, yes. So we expect to see this basically. Um trying to gather my mind. So I expect to see the at sign parser. So you have to parse it starting from this position, then followed by the ID parser. So capture that and call it base. If there was no base, return it, return the error message, and then um what else do we have? So we captured that, and now, now we have to ask the parser for a top rule, right? And that is going to look something like this. So we're going to say CC. Uh, that requires us to include base. Uh, base is not in this directory. It's in the parent directory. Come on, Sajad. OK. That. Parser dot parse top. This source and what's the position? The position is base dot token dot end position plus one. Right. If there was no top rule, return that as an year as the error. Right? This is this does return parse result, right? Yes. Okay. And so if there was a parse rule, you want to do something special, and you have to define a special token for it. So directive token is a public token, like so. We have a constructor that has an ID and a token start top cc source starting position and ending position, right? Let's copy everything in between. Okay. So uh, ID should come from ID, top should go from top, and the rest is just setting things up. Okay, so this should be end position and that should be two. Right. Uh, I don't like how that is split up, so let's do it like that. We need to have an ID here and a token start top. So this captures uh, the compile directive for us. Now, we can return a parse result here with a new directive token. So we assume we have our ID and we have the top CC and source are easy to handle. Now, the, in, the starting position should come from base, but the end position should come, should come from top, like so. And this should be top the token. Now all we have to do is ID. So let's do that. Uh, string star ID. So we have a tuple token inside of base that token. We want to capture the second element of that. This results in a ID token, I believe, and that has an ID field. And we want to capture its location. Right. 
So that should be everything. And uh, what's your problem? You have your ID, you have your token, you have CC source. Okay. Right. You need to have a string called description that is overriding and is virtual as well. And that was your problem. I guess. So directive token describe. So we are going to return at sign plus RID plus a dash dash like that plus the top the description whatever that is. You can even do it like that. Okay. So let's let's register directive uh, in our parser. So we have directive parser the header, and you can register it as a top row. And uh, what? What is the problem? Is that public? It is. So what's what's wrong? Init conversion failed. Uh oh, it's it's a parse rule, not the parser. That's why the autocomplete wasn't working. Okay. Now? Yes. So let's regenerate CMake rules because we added a new file and let's compile. Why are you recompiling everything? I don't know. Right. Now we should be able to capture the directive at least. Yes. So we are able to capture the directive, but we don't know how to parse it. Right. <clears throat> the next step, we want to register the two AST function. Like so, and we want to say AST star directive token to AST. So what do we want to do? We want to return a new directive. So new directive, assume that it exists. We will create it next. So it's going to be in the AST folder and directive.header. Right. So what does the directive want? It wants to know what directive we are trying to run alongside with the name. That's the ID, and the name should be. Uh, sorry, it should be the top, which is a statement. Is it a statement? No. We don't know if it's a statement. It's an AST, for all we know. It could be a type. Right, it could be anything here. So let's say uh, it is top to AST CC. And we can create our AST directive here. Basically, you know that directives are statements as opposed to, you know, what's inside of them. Because you have to take an action when you say directive. Right. So uh, let's include statement.h. And class directive has a public statement, and we have a public constructor which is a directive cd string id and an ast star top, top like that. And you need to have three little functions. Do you remember what they are called? Prepare, compile, and code gen. Right. So I assume you have those. Now you should be fine. Are you fine? Yes. 
So there's that. We know this is a C++ file, so do that. And we actually want to capture the ID. And we want to also capture the top. So I'm going to define those like that. And now we can write the implementation for it. So include the header file and write the constructor. So uh, can I copy this one? Thank you. ID comes from ID and top comes from top. Do that. There's no need to do anything else. Okay. Now we have to implement prepared compile and code gen. Now we know for a fact that prepare, compile, and code gen should be done one step earlier for DirectX. And that's because you want to prepare in this step, compile in this step, and run your code here because you're potentially changing stuff in other files. Right? So, what I'm going to do. I am going to um, hang on a second. Do we need to have a directives uh, module? So we have a separate module that handles all this stuff. Because different directives should have different rule sets. Or do you want to do everything here? Let's do a thing here for now. And we can optimize it later in case we need to. So the prepare function. For now, if the ID is anything but compile, Complain and say not implemented. Actually, let's be more helpful than that and say directive ID is not implemented. Okay. And then exit. You need to see base for that, I believe. Right. And the rest is assuming that. Assuming add some compile. So this file is only working with compile at the moment. Right. So what do we know about compile? We actually know that um, we know that it, it works on functions only. Um, Yes. Uh, what are they called? They called functions, right? So let's do like that and F and include them as well. So we know that they work with functions only, and we want to say okay, F should be a dynamic cast to a function star from what should it be from uh top. Say that. And if it failed to do so, you have to tell it that you only work on uh, what, it, what on functions. That compile only works on functions and exits. Right. Right. Now. If it was fine, then you can prepare and you can compile here as well. Or do you want to compile later? I think we can compile here too. So, let's, let's call it here just for now and we will decide to move it later if you need to. So compile, and now we actually have to code gen two. So code gen for me, please. 
Right. I am worried that this is going to be so bad when we actually do it. So let's 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 take a simpler approach. Uh, let's do everything on its place, and then we'll start moving things around. So you could generate your function, and now you actually want to run it. So I think there's something called an execution engine that we need to initialize, but I don't know how exactly. Good news is I do have a code from when I did this before that we can we can look at. So it's in statements and then compile directive, I think. Yes, it's here. Right. So we have to deal with execution engines. What did we do there? Um, did you define an execution engine from your current module? And you import the compiler. I don't think we need to do that, but let's, let's do this. Okay, so we do that. Oh. We have LLC in the middle here, and we need to include a little context as well right so we add the execution context uh what's that right next we want to uh we want to compile this somehow Right. So we to capture that, we call something called ee dot get function address, and the name is our function dot id. So we want to capture this name auto f address. Right. We capture that. And then we say int return value is a address. So let's just call that. So at this point, it is actually a function. And we know for a fact that this is an integer and it's a pointer to something that doesn't take any arguments, like so. Potentially, we can, we should cast it too. So it's an int function that gets nothing. Okay. And then we should call it. We are calling it, right. So do we have to do anything special here? I have to look into what import compiler does, but yeah, we have to then remove the module. Oh, oh. we have to then remove the module so that we can we can get it back and the compiler can work. Right. That seems to be everything, except I don't know what's happening inside the import compiler. Um, that is potentially coming from... I can grab that. Uh, I think it's coming from compiler.cc. And so what's, what's inside import compiler? Maybe code gen. Code gen that C plus plus import comp no. grep import compiler in star star that cpp uh, like so no seriously uh, how do it wait 
Wait, what? Okay. So we have it in... The definition is in compile statement. Okay. So node statements and then compile statements.cp and import compiler. Right. So what do we want to do? Oh, you're just defining different compiler thingies. That's fine. Right. We don't need to do that. Okay. So this should work. At this point, this should work. Uh, we didn't compile the, the important code. Do that again. Do that again. Right. I'm worried that maybe printf is going to throw an error, but we will see. I doubt it. I hardly doubt it. But there's a small chance that it is going to happen. Right. We got a segmentation fault. Line 38. So the function is not done for some reason. It's not capturing the function. Okay, <clears throat> let's try it again. Let's look at what we had. So, uh, we this is in the run. What happened before run? I guess um, I guess this is what happened before run, right? So, uh, what do we do? You're not interested in that. So if it's a define, you get a function define and we generate the function. We do that. We capture it. And then we run it. That's all we are doing there. So so why is it why isn't it working here? Okay, so um, if the f address was not available, I am going to say debug couldn't find. No, there was a problem in compile. Right. Let's see. Yeah, that's not really happening. It could be because of the printf function. I'm guessing it's because of the printf function. So let's see in the test seven. What if I comment this line out? Will this work? 
So it has nothing to do with that. Let's look at the function. So in the function, we have compile prepare code. Oh, we haven't called set ID on it, have we? What's the ID? Executing function. What's the ID? Maybe we have to do something in the parse. I'm not sure. Execution function compiler. So no, the ID is set. The ID is set. So let's let's not call this. Let's not call that and see um, what is being compiled first, and then we can decide what's wrong with our code. Okay. I'm not even calling anything. Thirty-eight. Let's comment that out too, I guess. Um. Oh wait. So, I think I know what's happening. So in our other contexts, we have a module like that. I think in the previous code, our module is a smart pointer. Uh, where should I want to do? Look at context. What is module? Maybe it's because module is not initialized before running all of these functions. That could be it too. So we have to initialize the target, set the data layout, set the target triple, and then do these things. So let's move everything down there, I guess. Uh, right. Will this work? Good. It could be that the directive wasn't initialized correctly, which is why you got the error. So this should potentially solve that. No? Again, at the same line. That is very weird. Um, let's compare it with our previous code, line by line. So room dot cpp. Okay. So we initialize some things there that we don't really do here. 
Maybe we should. Let's do it. Worst case scenario, it doesn't do anything. Right. I'm just trying to figure out what's really happening here. Same error. Yeah, same line. Okay, so so that was an it. That was an it. Maybe if you look at the code then file. Oh, yeah, right. So we initialize the context. We do some random things, and then we verify the module. When did you run things? Yeah, we, we do it early here. So the only thing that could be done is the init context. So maybe it is. No. That looks very plain to me. Okay, so uh, we are in directive, and we are calling function. Let's let's trace it by hand. Okay, so we start here probably. And we, we know it's a function because otherwise this would have been called. Then we go to the comp, uh, we run the prepare function. So what's your prepare function? You prepare the context, you prepare basically everything. Do we need to prepare See, I'm worried maybe we have to look at define instead. How does two A's to look like here? Yeah, you just you return function body token, you return the result of that. So you do return a function, if I'm not mistaken, function uh parser so here you return a statement and in the end you return f which is a function right so so you are returning a function so that's okay okay in the compile you register yourself you do your arguments you compile everything you have, and then that's it. In the code generation, you do a lot more work. So can I print the module at this point? I sure can, I just need the code. Let's print the module at this point and see what happens. Uh, like that. But we should see one function at this point. Right. The function is there. Call void printf and printf is declared up above that's fine that's fine
Maybe they've changed the engine builder. So you create your engine builder. And then we want to call the get function address. I am going to look at the documentation. Maybe there is something changed here. Wait, so I assume this was the, this was okay. Maybe maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's the problem actually. I hope not, but there's a possibility that, that we are not able to initialize our execution engine. Uh, here. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I think we know what the problem is. Right. So how should we properly initialize the execution engine? I always assume it's engine builder. You need to the JIT backend. You should be since it was barely used already. You need to include MC JIT. Uh, okay, let's include MC JIT. I think it's called MC and then MC JIT. No, is it JIT? Hang on a second. So in the CMake file. We have MCJs, right? Uh, let's let's do the set error thingy. So LLVM set Come on.
Oh, come on. Um, maybe we should look at the engine builder and set it right. So let's create the engine builder separately. I'm going to call it eb and eb.create here. Right. So if you were here, eb.set error string. Uh, sure, let's call it at e, cd string e, and then tell me what the error is. Please. Okay. Show me your error. Tell me what the fuck is happening here. It's been two hours, and after the import, this is driving me nuts. There is no error description. Wow, thank you, very nice. Um, I have no idea how to handle this one. Oh, that's to write an error. Maybe you should get error or something? Oh, I should do this beforehand. Right, 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 right. I should do this here. Okay, I should do that beforehand and then do that. That makes sense. That makes more sense than what was happening before. Okay. Let's see. Interpreter interpreter has not been linked in. Okay. Sure. I think I had it. Yeah, here. But apparently not. So LLVM, how do I do that? So we have interpreter, which I have included there. Let's let's include it here. Let's include it here, just in case, and see what happens. I doubt that's going to make any difference, but let's see. Could be, you know. Ah, undefined reference. So maybe, maybe we haven't done everything we need to do here. Um, interpreter. Run. No. Hmm. Okay, that's that's good. We are getting new errors, and that's always good. So, where is that? Oh.
engine. Uh, I think I have it here, but don't I have engine? No, I don't. Okay, that's that is very weird. Compile that. Now compile that. Okay. Do we have something called engine? We have execution engine and we have engine, so that should have worked. What about MC bit? You have only MC bit. You don't have anything else. We have an MC engine. No. This assembler MC, MC. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. Um, do I have any previous example of how I, I got this to work? I doubt. I doubt that I do. Um, but let's take it. So I included core, and that was everything I did. You see, LLVM flags lib core. But for some reason, this one doesn't seem to care. So, uh, any idea how we want to handle this one? I mean, the interpreter is there, right? It is there, in fact. So what's your problem? Maybe if I remove everything and then regenerate it? I don't know, I'm just... Trying things at this point. There is a strong possibility that it's not going to work. And I'm aware of it, unfortunately. But what else am I going to do? Right? It's a linking problem. So, yeah. Hang on. Uh, what happens if I, instead of linking the interpreter, Try to do it with the JIT thingy. So if I do MC JIT instead, I know that is inside our build command. I'm going to take a second. Compile everything and give me an error on link. Come on. Yeah, it did give me an error there. But if I do MCG, it's Because I know I do have MCGs available. Yeah. Undefined reference to LLVM linking MCG. But I do have MCG here. Come on. Don't do this to me. MCG is there. You know what, LLVM CMake rule is just bullshit. I don't know how anyone puts up with that.
Do I have to do anything other than that? I'm linking the libraries, and that should be enough, right? Okay. They say it is outdated. I'm going to trust them because I'm helpless at this point. Let's command these, regenerate my CMake rules, we run that. I don't even know what I did there. What did I do? <laughs> I ran that command, stored that inside LLVM libraries. And I guess this should be LLVM libraries. Let's do that. And then libraries. Libraries. Okay, yes. Wait, what? It has leading or trading white space. So with what? Uh, it will be in libraries, right? I really hate dealing with teammate. This is not a hard thing to do. So you execute the process from an LLVM config dash dash leaves all and you output it to this variable, LLVM underline libraries. Uh, just to double check, this is spelled exactly the same as the other one. So that, that should be fine. You know what? I'm going to change that back to this one, and instead of changing this one, Wait, seriously? No, that's not correct.
What about core? What about so it's not all, it's not full, but what if I do it? So what about this one? This is what I what I usually run, right? So we expect I expect to run that one, and that should work for me. Run it. Yes. So if I remove the LD flags and the C no, that, that that doesn't work. Can I hard code this one? Dash L LLVM dash eleven. Does it work if I hard code it? Seems to right? With compile though. Compile. It, it actually fucking compiled. Okay. Does it run? <sighs> I hate CMake. I hate CMake with all I have. Right, so that works, but that, but that's not acceptable, right? Because it should be something like that. And how do I CMake a strip white space at the end? I hate it. Okay, lips like that. And so we want to replace the empty space at the end of LLVM lips. Uh, only one L. Okay, do that. Can you? Yes. And now uh, do that. Sure. Okay, this is working now. For some fuck up reason, which is all I wanted to see. Running in composite time. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm too worked up. I have to I have to revert some of the changes that we made. Um let's see. If I remove those, is it still going to work? Because I am initializing everything outside, right? So I expect this to work. This is still working. Okay, that's good. Uh, remove that dash B flag. Running in compile time. Okay. So, does it still work if I move this up? Before all of this thing, where was it originally? I think it was here, right before the Tiger Triple. Does it still work if I do that? It does. Great. Now, go to the directive. I don't want to... That never happens. This might happen, we're going to keep that. We don't want to print it anymore. Let's recompile. Okay. 
that's a lot better. I am so glad that it's working, but I'm so worked up. Uh, <laughs> I'm really angry at Scenic. Yes, it is working. Okay. Um, remove all of the while grind files and remove the binary file just in case. And let's recompile. Oh, uh, of course. You have to remake the CMake thingy first. Generate CMake. And now you are allowed to recompile. Okay. Give it a second, I'll be back, and we will continue to deal with this. Okay, we're back. Uh, it finished without any compilation error. Let's see if it actually works. It does. So there we go. That's our base compiler directly. So now we can, the good news is we can actually comp uh, run things from inside the compiler. That's a game changer uh, because from now on we can do some crazy shit. So <clears throat> we're running things in compile time. And I want to see if I can call another function. So technically, I should be able to call any function that comes before me. So let's see. Test is a function that returns an integer and returns 10. Right? So printf test is that. That should work. Just for aesthetics. This should work, and if I run this, I get the result. So, so that's okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to be able to look at the return type and decide what to do next based on the thing that comes, right? So if I return 1, the compiler should throw a warning, and if I return anything higher than that, the compiler should halt the execution. So we are going to look at the return value. So if the return value is one warning, and if the return value is higher than one for whatever reason, this is an error. So in this case, I expect you to say compile directly returned higher than one. And oh, I, I guess we can actually say what it returned, right? So return red val and then exit with whatever value that was. Here, um, we can say compile directly return warning 
and we can say which compile directive as well. So let's say we have our um, f.id here. We can do the same thing here as well, I think. Yes, okay. So now, uh, if I recompile that, it should tell me that, uh, so returning one shouldn't exit, should it? No. Compile directive, compile test, return warning. Okay, returning more than one. Compile the exit, compile return two, and it, it exited with that value, I believe. Yes. So that that's perfect. Perfect. We don't need a warning or anything, so let's just go back to this one. Now, the next part, and let's actually commit this so we don't lose the progress. So the next part that we should handle is passing the compiler structure inside. So, and this is really tricky, but we do have a, com a base compiler object in memory, and we should be able to pass it to directives. So their directives can do whatever they want with it, right? So for example, um, this is basically what's going to happen. So we will say that C is a pointer to a compiler, or it's a compiler directly. Maybe it's a pointer to compiler. I don't know. Let's say it's a pointer to a compiler. All uh, right. And now uh, you should have a compiler, which is a struct. And this should have some properties inside of it that is accessible to us here. So for example, we might say, okay, compiler has a exit function. Yes. So compiler has an exit function that takes an integer and returns unit. We should be able to say that and something else that I wanted to have, compiler should have a, um, a debug statement, I want to say. Oh, let's, just, let's implement the exit one first. And here I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say C that exit with 100. So the compiler execution should, should fail right there and then, okay? So, here we have to, we have to deal with arguments, okay? So, if f that tag has a size of zero, that's how you want to handle things. I'm guessing in Threadwell and bool is ran. So if at the end, if no is ran, uh, we are going to say on compile directive whatever the name is wasn't doesn't have a correct signature let's say that and exit I assume right so uh in case there are no arguments, we just do that. In case there's exactly one argument, 
pass in, we want to pass in the struct uh, compiler. And I'm going to put that in code. So we know we are dealing with something crazy. And this is going to say C. This is going to say void star. And this is going to say void star. All right, so you, you, you are expecting a compiler object. And you get C from CC get compile object. Okay, and we we call that function whatever it might be. Now, how do we implement that? I am going to go into the base that header, create a new function called void star get compile object, and I am going to get void star compile object and this is going to be like that of course and you should get a void star there okay so as far as this is concerned that's the correct implementation uh what Right. Now we just have to implement get compile object here. So to do that, I am going to go in cc.c++. What's cc.h? Okay. And we are going to create that function. So void star uh, compile context gets compile object. So this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. If the compile object is available, and let's actually write that with uppercase O return compile object with uppercase O. Oh come on. Okay. And if it's not available, well we are going to create it here basically. Right now, what does the creation look like? So we don't we don't really care. So let's just say malloc of size of integer. There is no there's nothing inside. But We have to initialize compile functions in the module. That's the important thing. So what compile functions are we talking about? Uh, size of, I guess size of should be surrendered in parentheses. Yeah. So we have to initialize the compile functions. And the way to do that is by being lazy. And looking at our old source code. So uh, I'm guessing code gen. That's okay. no, no. It was it was node something. Yeah. It was import compiler. Right, right, right. So uh, we need to get the execution engine here. Right? How do we do that? So we, we, we create functions. Okay. We do we do need to get that the execution engine here. So I'm gonna say LLVM exec uh let's get P like that. Thank you for following me, Amir Muhammad. Welcome to our stream. 
Welcome to our stream. How's it going? Execute, execution, engine star ee. -E. I am. I know that execution engine star e. So we, we cast that here. I just don't want to put it here because that's going to increase compile time by like a million, and we don't really want that. Okay. There's that, uh, and I'm guessing I have to update the directive to pass it. Can we? Mm. Here, you should pass e, or rather, e e, uppercase. Okay. There's that. We create the compile object, and now the first. The first function that we need to deal with is the compiler exit. I'm going to copy this one. There's no reason to make it hard for myself for for ourselves. And we're just going to copy it. And let's see if it works. Right. So uh let's rename that to EE. Okay. So we capture compiler exit. We create a new one called compiler exit replace. Okay. This should be LLC like that. Uh okay. And uh, we also need to pass LLC here, I believe. There's no CC, there's this. Right, that's what's the problem because we are inside CC. We need to have the LL context as well. Okay. Do I need to pass in a star? I don't know, we'll find out. Okay. Now, um, so this again should be. LLC. The exit callback, we will define that function. And everything else seems to be okay. But can we? Right, so the exit callback. Wait, no, it's not wait. Uh, it's you in something. U int sixty four exit callback return. Uh, well, you're going to call exit whatever input was, and I think you are actually void if I'm not mistaken. So, as your input, you get the I and you do that. Is that correct? Let's look at the exit callback. Void star c. Okay, so you have to you have to capture void star c, which is the compile context, I believe. Okay, so so this should work now. This should actually work if it compiles. Okay, let's see. Right, so we get some some errors, and let's see. So no matching function for cards will have builder. What's FP here? Okay. 
let's let's close this one from here and open it here. Uh, okay, so I'm guessing it has changed. We have to provide a function type, a function pointer, and that. So that's the function pointer, and the function type we have it here. I believe so. Um, function type. Where's our function type? Is it in F? Do we have it in F? I think it's in F too. Okay, so let's see. F that get function type. Okay. That's a change to the LLVM API. Okay. So now we are starting to communicate with the compiler from our source code. So this code here, let's let's see if it works first. God damn it, couldn't parse. What is it that you can't parse? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, why are you getting a segmentation fault then? Wow. So the segmentation fault is. Main, compile, 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 compile. Name type. Okay, let's look at that file. Name type line sixty four. It's not resolved. Oh God! So in the method call, are you calling compile for the thing is? Your argument, your arguments. So um, you're calling prepare on them. You are calling compile on them, and that's everything that matters, right? So what's the what's the problem? So in the directive, we are calling. So the directive is compiling, and realize it has a method call, right? In the method call, we deal with that like that. Maybe method call statement is the problem. Uh, we call prepare, compile, and code gen. So that's fine. In the prepare, in the prepare, come on. Could you go to the definition? Right. So we call prepare on each of the arguments, so that's fine. Oh, I think I, I know why. So we add an argument here. So we add an argument. And uh, no, we do, we do initialize it. Don't we? We do. So that's not a, that's not a problem either. Oh God. Uh... Let's see. So we are dealing with the name type, and the name types um, 
I'm going to open them here. Name types have a resolve type, right? And the resolve type is initialized only here. And if at that point there is no resolve type, okay, no, this is handled. Okay, it is handled here. If there's no resolve type, it's going to throw an error there. So I'm gonna put an else statement. Uh, you know what? I'm going to just do this resolve name of. So what are we resolving? ID. And let's see if we encounter that. So is it even called then? Let's call line 90. So. Hang on a second. So you have a. This is an argument. exp is a mem access and the underlying thing should be an argument so <clears throat> we call compile on it and i think we should call prepare on it somewhere too so this the, the problem is that this is not being called in the proper place right for method call, method call is not calling compile on its mem on its base member. So why is that happening, really? Um, method call in the compile. I I think this should be it. I believe this should be it because we call type on that. So in the uh, variable access or variable value, do we call it? Oh, right, 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 right. We don't do anything here. Yes, we have to call compile here on our type. So um, type. How, how does this work? Uh, it should be... Well, no, it shouldn't be here. It should be in the ags. Yes. So you have to call type that uh, not there. You have to call type that compile here. And uh, that prepared here, right? Let's see. That should solve it, I think. Okay. Um, run. So we are running in compile time. Let's see the exit status code. Exist status code is 100. So this is awesome. So let's trace what's happening here. Just just see just see what's happening here. So we asked the compiler to compile this file for us. So we are in the compiler. The compiler starts scanning and realizes, okay, we have a compiled directive. So I have to compile this one first. It compiles that one, then it runs this one. So we go inside another program. This program calls back the compiler 
here. So we go back to the first program and there we decide to exit the application. So we are four layers deep at this point. Okay, and this work, and this is this is just the base. So now uh, we can start to something like this. So we can have a compiler dot room file. Uh, I hope that's in the correct folder. Yes, and we can move all of this stuff there. Now all you have to do is import compiler, and the same still the same thing should still work. Compiler is not a type. It did not work. <laughs> uh, that. Uh, so that's the problem with the import statements. Um, you know what? One thing at a time. So go back, do that. This runs. Right. And it is meaningless because if I remove out.o and I do that again, out.o doesn't get generated because we are preventing the compiler from doing that. But if I comment this line and run this again, it says the compiler, what? Oh, so um, you have to say that is ran is true and is ran is true. Okay, compile that one. Save. Wait, did I not save the comp the compile thingy? Because import statement should be correct. Maybe I didn't save it. Import compiler. Run this one. It does. It does work. Yes. Great. And if I uncomment this one, now it should exist halfway there. So it works. The, the compile directives work, and we can pass messages to and from uh, the, the program to the compiler. I'm going to commit this one. Compiler, so we are going to call it the compiler, um, what should we call? Uh, callback directive. And I am going to take another short break. And then we are coming back and continue. How long has it been? Up time. Almost three hours. So I'm going to take maybe a longer break and then I'll be back. Maybe I'll be back in two or three minutes tops.
Uh, hi, Fatima. Thank you for doing that. Sorry, I wasn't awake. Uh, okay. So that worked. And I guess we don't need this anymore. Uh, we should probably start clearing up some of the code that we just wrote. Especially this one. I see a lot of useless code here. And then, uh, right. Right, 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 right. So, just a question do you think I should maybe send? I want to do this for some reason. I want to say this. And then when you go here, I should be able to say, okay, uh, let's not see if it works. I was able to convert back. I'm not sure if, if it is possible because it is moving through so many different layers, but I guess it's only an integer, so it should be. Let's see if it works. Okay. Uh, compile and done. So if I run this now, it was okay. Great. So we have the exit directive and let's let's add let's add something meaningful. Because you know no one is really going to call exit, right? Uh what would be something meaningful to add to our compiler? Well we can we can import more files, I guess. But that's not fun. Um Something else that we can do, we can traverse all of the functions defined so far. We can also look at the uh, yeah. There are a lot of things that we can do, and I'm too excited to think of something. So I am going to instead of doing anything, I'm going to commit that and say uh, change inner compiler to cc and i'm going to push that and then i i want to right i want to try and write some uh basic program so we wrote we wrote fizzbuzz last time and it was fun and all but we can do better right I don't know what to write. I'm so I'm too excited. This was a roller coaster for for me. You know, we 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 went through different uh, phases during this development. Uh, nothing was working. Then everything was working. Then we had problem with CMake. Then we got that fixed. And we had problem with you know directives. Then we got that fixed. And now we are here. So I think I'm going to stop now. It's it's been three hours and it's enough for now. We can come back later and work some more on this. But I, I just can't deal with this anymore uh, for now. I'm too excited. Thank you for joining me, as always. Uh, I do hope that we see each other again tomorrow. And until then, have a great day. Bye-bye.